In today's Leeds News Academy update, Leeds and Everton legal case update, Rocka speaks on Leeds' future, Carrick open on Ailing, and this week's Lone Watch. Morning folks, Jay here, Thursday morning on the 14th of March, hope you're all having a really good week so far, we've got a bit of news to get into and we won't muck about today, there's a lot to cover so we will cover it quickly, we'll get into this and we won't mess around, there is a, a brief academy update um, to give you this morning. Uh, Leeds United under-21s have been drawn at home to Chelsea in the quarter-final of the Premier League Cup. The tie will take place on the 30th of March. There's no confirmation of location just yet. Could be Allen Road, could be York. Hasn't been confirmed just yet. Moving on to the under-18s and 5,000 tickets have been sold so far for the FA Youth Cup semi-final against Millwall. That game will take place on Thursday the 4th of April, 7pm kickoff at Elland Road. In some bad news leading into that game, Leeds have confirmed that striker Marty Wilson won't play as he has suffered a back injury, a significant back injury that will sideline him for a number of months. Marty Wilson has been very, very good for the under-21s this season. He had a tricky enough game against Liverpool in the previous round. It was kicked, lumps were kicked out of him in that game, but he still managed to get involved in, in Leeds' goal in that game as well. And has been a really good player for Leeds. He's got a lovely goal in the, in the round before that one, before the Liverpool game as well. He's a good player and Leeds will miss him. He's a very much a focal point of their attack. He's a strong player, holds the ball quite well, gets involved and is a good finisher. So um, Leeds will have to adapt to that one. Uh, moving on to one of the main stories floating around and it's the legal case between Leeds United other EFL clubs against Everton and earlier this season we heard that Leeds, Southampton, Burnley and Leicester all plan to take legal action against Everton should they be found in breach of financial fair play rules. As we know that they were, the clubs had to hold on and wait to see if the appeal would change the situation and the appeal did come in and the uh, Everton had their deduction reduced to six points now. The language that was used in this is significant. The language that was used was that Everton gained a sporting advantage by breaching the financial fair play rules. The question has been since then, what's next? What's happening? And in an ironic twist, Leicester themselves find themselves in a situation where they could be on the verge of receiving a points deduction for next season in the Premier League, should they go up. Uh, which clearly undermines any grounding that they had on a legal case against Everton having broken the rules themselves, or potentially broken the rules themselves. Although not a legal expert, former Legion United goalkeeper Paul Robinson had had his say on this, and he believes that Leeds have a huge case to take against Everton on the fact that they lost significant revenue as a result of the breach. According to the Daily Mail, back on the 17th of November in 2023, Leeds had informed Everton of their intention to take legal action. Sports lawyer Simon Leaf has also now told I Newspaper on February 28th that Leeds, Southampton and Burnley will all take legal action against the club on the back of the appeal verdict. The Daily Mail believe, however, that this situation won't be handled in a public court and will more than likely be settled outside of court. The opposing argument on this from the Everton perspective has been that by this stage, Everton will possibly have been punished twice with two penalty point deductions in this season. However, from a Leeds perspective, and bearing in mind at the earlier stage of Leeds, Leeds' case here kind of looked a bit weak because they'd finished second bottom and not third bottom, and which meant they'd another club above them. The fact now that Nottingham Forest have a pending FFP decision to be brought against them for breaching financial fair play rules, Everton have a second one against them, and now Leicester as well. That means all three teams that finished above Leeds United last season did so by breaching the financial fair play rules, while Leeds played within the walled garden and played within the rules. So... All the other clubs appear to have broken the rules in order to stay in the Premier League or in Leicester's case, attempt to stay in the Premier League while Leeds fell out of the Premier League by abiding by the FFP rules. Now, we talked about it yesterday's news about the changes to the Premier League's uh, financial structure and how that's going to work in the next season or so. Not confirmed, not final just yet, but very much a talking point for the next couple of weeks. But uh, it would appear that Leeds are still moving down the road of legal action. It's about £100 million 
pounds per club that they're looking at here the case against Everton which could force Everton into a situation where they may end up in administration even though they're on the verge of a takeover from 777 partners it's not great for Everton fans and people will always say why are the fans being punished as a Leeds United fan we have been punished multiple times multiple times because of bad owners who made bad decisions so it's there for everybody same rules for everybody Moving on, let's talk about the Exiles. And it's in the news and everyone's talking about it. And everyone wants to get it to know what are they going to do next season. Well, Mark Rocket is the latest one of the Leeds United loanees that is speaking about his future. The return of the Exiles, if Leeds go up, is hot on everybody's lips right now and a topic of much, much discussion. Speaking on whether he would like to see Leeds United get promoted to the Premier League next season, Mark Rocket had the following to say. There's a chance like this year that if Leeds are not in the Premier League, I can go on loan again. Let's see. It depends on whether they go up or not. Things are out of my control. He went on to say, I sincerely want them to go up because I wish all the teams that I have been in well and I wish you all the best. I am grateful to them. I wish them the best. It has been my home and from there we will see what's next. The key piece in this to take out is the fact that Mark Rocca has said if Leeds United are not in the Premier League next season, he can go on loan again. I keep saying this. I've been saying it all season. I've had people constantly tell me that I'm wrong on this. It appears that every time one of the loanies speaks about next season, this comes up. Any of the players that were signed last season or signed new deals last season all appear to have this loan release clause if Leeds are not in the Premier League. It doesn't relate to one season. The wording relates to Leeds not being in the Premier League. So should Leeds not get promoted this year, all of the players that have gone out on loan this year that were signed last season or signed new deals last season will all be eligible to go on loan again, which doesn't help Leeds in any way. The fact that Rock has brought this up as the first point in the conversation to me clearly states that the player is not a player who wants to play for Leeds United, but is a player that probably wants to play in the Premier League and he's not alone on that. I think I said it yesterday or a couple of days ago, Leeds need to sign players that want to play for Leeds United, not that just want to play in the Premier League and get Premier League wages. It's very important that Leeds learn from their mistakes of the past. These players all walked away from Leeds when Leeds needed them. They caused the problem. And then they left. I've seen some people ignore this fact because certain players have ability. Max Fober being a prime example and would welcome him back with open arms. Another player who turned his back on the club when was needed. A player that described himself as a warrior. And then as soon as the battle happened, turned around and left. For me, for me, and it's my personal opinion, if you have a different opinion on this, absolutely fine. No problem at all. But for me, I wouldn't be welcoming any of these players back. I think Leeds need to move on with players that are committed to Leeds United and want to be at Leeds United. All these players are committed to money and not Leeds. Personal opinion. Personal opinion. Anyway, let's move on and talk about Luke Ayling. And um, as we know, Luke Ayling's contract with Leeds United is up at the end of the season. And for all intents and purposes, the noise from Ellen Road signal that a new contract will not be offered to Luke Ayling, which will bring an end to Bill's seven-year tenure at Leeds United. Currently enjoying a bit of a purple patch with Middlesbrough and getting two assists in his last two games for them. Um, Ailing's future has started to look a bit more concrete and the possibility of turning his loan at Middlesbrough into a permanent deal has been discussed. Now, according to Michael Carrick, he has weighed in and given his opinion on the situation. Carrick has said the following. You're always playing for something and as it stands at this moment, that's obviously what's next. Looking at him, that's not at all at the forefront of his mind. Not at all. He's all in. He's desperate to do well and win games for us and we'll have to see. This will play out how it's going to play out over the next few weeks months he's doing very well there's been a couple of people criticizing him and i think a lot of people that are criticizing bill are just borough fans that don't like leads it appears to be the, the, those vocal people you, we know who we're talking about here if you watch youtube and you watch online content you know who we're talking about here the fact that he played for leads doesn't sit well with a lot of people however he has been playing very very well two assists in his last two games in the last week for middlesbrough and clocking up some minutes as well he's, he's doing really well in what has been a resurgence of form for middlesbrough as well so good for luke that he'll have, a, have hopefully have a contract at middlesbrough next season i'm sure he'll get picked up by another club in no time should they decide not to take up any option of bringing the player in permanently and then finally today folks we'll wrap up and finish up with today's long watch Darko JB was brought on as a substitute in the 72nd minute in Plymouth's one all draw with Blackburn Luke Ayling as I said standout performance and an assist in their 2-0 win against QPR he also got an assist midweek and played 90 minutes with was substitute in the 90th minute in their 1-0 win against QPR Sam Greenwood came on the 78th minute in their 2-0 win at QPR and also came on the 66th minute in their game against Birmingham midweek 
Diego Llorente played 90 minutes and scored an absolute banger for Roma in their 2 all draw with Fiorentina. Rasmus Christensen will be out of action for upwards of a month after picking up a significant tie injury. Jeremiah Mullen is currently looking at a season-ending injury that he picked up a few weeks ago. Thank you to everybody that updated me on that information. I couldn't find it and I really appreciate everyone who sent that, sent that in to me. Ian Paveda couldn't play in the game against Leeds, obviously Leeds being his parent club. Lewis Bay played 89 minutes and got an assist in MK Don's 3-1 win against Salford. Max Vober taken off in the 72nd minute in Gladbach's 3-3 draw with Cologne. Brendan Aronson substitute appearance again for him coming off the bench in the 73rd minute in Union Berlin's 2-0 defeat to Stuttgart. Jack Harrison was taken off in the 61st minute in the 2-all loss to Manchester United for Everton. Mark Rocket brought off the bench in the 78th minute for Betis in their 3-2 defeat to Villarreal. And Cody Drama clocked up 90 minutes in Birmingham's 1-0 defeat to Millwall. Um, that's going to be probably it for me today, folks. Just a quick reminder, we will have a live stream tonight, 7pm, myself and Stats previewing the Millwall game on Sunday. You can check that out. It's already linked on the, 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 the tabs down below. You can check that out if you want to. And I'll be back tomorrow for more Leeds news as well. I will see you this evening or I will see you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. Talk to you then.